So let's look at the solution to the organic chemistry test questions. Question one says Dash was the first organic compound synthesized in laboratory without the aid of any kind of vital force. And for this question here, the answer is urea. So urea here is the answer to the question. By the way, if you find this, if you find this um, questions blurry, okay, if you can't see it properly, simply go to your setting sections and increase the video quality, right? So with an increased video quality, you can see the questions clearer. Let's proceed. Question two. Question two says, which of the following species has the most polar bond? All right. So first things first, let me explain what polar bond mean. And I'll give you some few points, then I'll answer these questions. All right. So what exactly is a polar bond? When we say polar bond, what does it mean? By definition, a polar bond is a covalent bond between two atoms where the electrons forming the bond are unequally distributed okay so it's just simply a covalent bond between two atoms where the electrons forming the bond are unequally distributed this is how you define a polar bond now here's something to note when a molecule cons consists of the same atoms right they are usually non-polar so what, if i have a molecule like H h2 right a molecule of let's say hydrogen which is h2 this one here is non-polar because if I look at H2, H2 consists of the same atom that is hydrogen. Same thing with chlorine, C Cl2, right? A Cl2 molecule is simply a molecule of chlorine which contains two atoms of chlorine. So basically, we are saying that um, so basically we are saying that the atomic molecules are um, non-polar, all right? So now with this concept, let's go back to the question. So the question here says, which of the following species has the most polar bond? So first thing says, we know that HH, that's hydrogen, and chlorine are non-polar. Now between carbon and hydrogen and carbon and chlorine, which of them is the most um, polar, which of them has the most polar bond? The answer is carbon and chlorine, all right? Um, probably I'll do a separate video to explain the concept of this polar bond. But for now, please note that um, between carbon and hydrogen and carbon and chlorine, note that carbon and chlorine is or is note that carbon and chlorine has the most polar bond. Right. Let's look at question three. Question three says ethane has dash tertiary carbon atoms. Right. Ethane has dash tertiary carbon atom or atoms and dash primary hydrogen atom or hydrogen atoms. Um, how do we get this? Our first task would be to just draw the structure of ethane. So let's draw the structure of ethane. All right, so for ethane, for et, I have two carbons. Right, that's an et, okay? All right, so for ethane, for et, I have two carbons that make up the et, all right? Then to complete this, for an alkane, it's just a single bond. I'll complete these. So I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this. I have this, and then I have this. Now, the question says we should find um, the number of tertiary carbon and then primary hydrogen, right? Yep, tertiary carbon, primary hydrogen. Now, here's what to note. When it comes to a tertiary carbon, a tertiary carbon is simply a carbon atom that is combined to three substituents or perhaps three alkyl groups. Right, so this is like a tertiary carbon. When you have a carbon atom like this that's attached to three alkyl groups, so this is one, this is two, this is three. This is called a tertiary carbon. All right, now if you look at this, for ethane, we have just two carbon atoms this one here, carbon one and carbon two. Observe that this carbon here, this carbon here, right, this carbon here, carbon one, is attached to only one alkyl group. That means I can still rewrite this as being C, H, H, H. And then I can add here as CH3, like this. This is the same thing as what you have on the left-hand side. So this, this one here is the same thing as what you have here. So whenever you have a carbon like this that is attached to just one alkyl group, as you can see here, this is called a primary carbon. So this carbon here is a primary carbon. That means the carbon you have here is actually a primary carbon. The same thing with the carbon on the left-hand side. So if I rewrite this, now considering carbon 2, let's say I have carbon 2 as carbon, I have H, H, 
H. Now to the left here, I have this one here, this particular carbon here, which I can see right as CH3, like this in a condensed form. That means in this case here, this carbon here, which is carbon 2, is attached to one alkyl group. And that makes it what there? A primary carbon. Why? It's attached to one alkyl group. In essence, carbon 2 is also a primary carbon. So that means the number of tertiary carbon I have here, tertiary carbon is written as 3 not C, right? I have zero tertiary carbon. The next one said the number of hydrogen, primary hydrogen. Now, primary hydrogen is simply 1 not H. This is primary hydrogen. Now, primary hydrogen are simply the hydrogen that are attached to the primary carbon. If I look at ethane, ethane has two primary carbons, these two here. So for the first primary, for C1, all right, which is the first primary carbon here, how many hydrogen do we have? We have up here, one, to the left, two, downwards, three. Also, carbon two is also a primary carbon as we established, right? Now, if you look at how many carbons, how many hydrogen are attached to carbon two, we have upward, one, to the right, hydrogen two, downwards, hydrogen three. So in total, it means I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six primary hydrogen um, atoms here so in essence my answer is zero and six zero tertiary carbon and six primary um, hydrogen so zero six is my answer and that is option e zero six that's your answer question four says the slowest step um question four the slowest step in a multi-step chemical reaction is called the dash now the answer is simply the rate determining step that's the answer so rate is the mining step, that's your answer. All right, question five. Question five says the reaction of a secondary amine and an alkanal or alkanon yields dash. Now for this question here, the answer is enamine. So enamine is the answer. Uh, let me give you the equation for the reaction. So for number five, number five, the equation of the reaction looks like this. So first things first, we said, um first we have here is secondary amine all right now a secondary amine is simply an amine that is attached to two radicals so let's say i have an amine n here right this this and then h up this makes an amine for this to be secondary i'll have my first radical or a chi group attached to this and then a second radical or a chi group attached to this Right, so this is a secondary because this one has two radicals attached to this, R and R prime. So combine this plus, they said an R canal. They said an R canal, question five. It says an R canal or R canon. So let's see what this gives you. Um, let's combine this with, with an R canal. For an R canal, your general formula is this. I have um, C double bonded upwards to ox to oxygen right and i have this one here bonded to let's call this r prime prime let's say i have a third um alkyl group here or radical and i have let's say we have um ch3 for instance here okay if you want to all right so combine these two here what do you get so this is my the alkanal or alkanon what i have here is the secondary secondary amine all right so when these two combine i said it will form an n-amine now note that for this reaction the reaction is actually um a reversible reaction so it's something that you should note just in case so it's a reversible reaction that's this and i have h3o plus then the enamine looks like this for your enamine you have something like this you have a first carbon double bonded to a second carbon upwards i would have nitrogen single bonded to r prime okay down here i have r prime prime then we have this Okay, let's um this and this. So what I have here is the structure for an by the way, the other R will be here too. Okay, so basically this is how an N amine looks like, right? 
All right, so this is literally the equation of the reaction. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. So this is the equation of the reaction. When a secondary amine combines with an alkanal or alkanone to give you an N amine, this is what it looks like, all right? You can get the complete organic chemistry course to understand how all of this works, all right? This is just an illustration. All right, let's proceed. Let's proceed with this. The next question there, question six. Question six here says, which of the following, which of the following group, question six, which of the following groups has the lowest priority in the can in gold prelog sequence, right? Um, here's what to note. Now, for this sequence, here's something to note here. Uh, I think I'll do a separate video also explaining this concept. But for this, note that the greatest priority in most cases are given to, for this set of options, I have chlorine greater than um this greater than this then greater than hydrogen so in most cases these are like the option you see chlorine then you see the amine structure this you see uh, perhaps the methyl group and then hydrogen right the one with the lowest priority is always hydrogen but in case where you don't have hydrogen then your answer would be methyl so for these options here, the answer is methyl. All right. So as I said, I'll do a separate video to explain how this concept works. Okay. All right. Question seven. Question seven says, according to Makonikov's rule, what would be the major product obtained from the acid catalyzed addition of water to um, this compound here? Right. What I have here is one propene. So if I add one propene and water, According to Makonikov's um, rule, what will my what what will my products be? Now let's see what the product would look like. Now the first thing to notice this. Let's get the equation of the reaction. So I was given question seven. I was given this um, CH three, right? CH double bonded to CH two. This was the reactant. They said using Makonikov's rule, combine this with water. What do you get? Now, for this reaction, note that what I will get is this. I will get this. Um, okay. I will get this. So, my answer here would simply be a secondary alcohol. Now, a secondary alcohol of the same number of carbon atoms. Here I have one, two, three, forming the propanol, right? Forming the propene. Okay. So, I have like three carbons here forming the propene. So, in this case, I will now have a three carbon secondary alcohol that becomes ch3 ch and then ch3 then here would be the oh i'd have hydroxide here right so you have a secondary alcohol in essence what you have here would most likely be this is two propanol you have two propanol um this is water of course this is water what you have here is propene. All right, so you have this. So let's see which option is 2-propanol. Um, by the way, 2-propanol in the condensed form would be CH3, CHOH, and then CH3. So let's see which option is this question 7. So come to question 7 here. All right, so the third one here is the answer. CH3, CHOH, CH3. That's your answer. All right. Question 8. Question 8 says, All right. So, question 8 says, The reaction of an alkyl halide with ammonia produces A slash an. What's the answer? The answer to this is a primary amine. So, the answer is a primary amine. So, take note that when you react an alkyl halide with ammonia, the result or your product would be a primary amine okay number nine number nine here says ethers are considered as good solvents in organic reactions because they are why are ethers considered as good solvents for this the answer would be unreactive towards most reagents that's why so ethers are usually um unreactive okay 
they are, re they are unreactive towards most reagents. That's why they are considered as good solvents. That's your answer. That's amongst this option here. All right, so look at the last question here, question 10. Okay, we'll do a part two video where we'll answer the complete questions. For here, we'll stop with question 10. So let's look at question 10. Question 10 says, indicate whether the following species are primary, secondary, or tertiary. So I'll draw the species and then I'll explain why it's either a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary. All right, so the first one here, I have C. Um, here is OH. Upwards is CH3. To the left is CH3. Downwards is also CH3. Okay. Also, um, I also have this, okay. Um, H3, C, CH3, they are the same thing. All right, so NH2. I have C. I have NH2. Upwards CH3, downwards CH3, to the left H3C. So what are H3C or CH3? They are the same thing. All right. So you ask to, you ask if you should determine if this is a primary, secondary, or tertiary. Now, how do you know? Simple. For a primary carbon, the carbon atom is attached to one alkyl group. For a secondary, the carbon atom is attached to um, two alkyl groups. Why for a tertiary carbon atom, the carbon atom is attached to three alkyl groups. Now, with that said, first things first, we are asked to determine if this species, in this case here, this species is having an OH. That means this species is an alcohol. All right. So this species is an alkanol. Of course, alkanols and alcohols are the same thing. So it's an alcohol. All right. So it's an alcohol. So the question is, is this a primary, a secondary or a tertiary alcohol? This carbon is attached to upwards one alkyl group, to the left, the second alkyl group, downwards, the third alkyl group. So it becomes a tertiary alcohol. That means here, your answer is tertiary. All right. The next one is this, which is this one here. All right, so I have this. This is sheet too. I have this. So what I have here is actually this species, based on what I have here, NH2, this is an amine. All right. So is this a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine? Now observe that the carbon here, in this case, this carbon here is attached to upward. I have the first alkyl group. To the left, I have the second alkyl group. To the left, I have the second alkyl group. Then downwards, I have the third alkyl group. So I have three alkyl groups here. That becomes a tertiary amine. That means for this, both of them are tertiary. So I have tertiary amine. All right. So for this video, I will stop at question 10. All right. All right. So this is where we stop for this particular video, right? Um, I'll do the other questions from question 11 to the end in the next video. But before we go, uh, let me give you a, a question to do. Um, from number seven here, According to Makonikov's rule, okay? So let me change what I'm giving here. Now, you tell me, according to Makonikov's rule, if you're given this compound, um, you're given this CH3, CH2, CH2, then CH double bonded to CH2. Now, according to Makonikov's rule, what do you think the product, this product would be if I combine this with um, water as we did in question seven all right so leave your answer in the comment section so tell me what i would get if i combine this with water according to makonikov's rule now i've given you a hint before but your hint is this what you have is a secondary alcohol so tell me the name of this product as a secondary alcohol leave it in the comment section all right so if you enjoyed this video please make sure you like this video okay so hit the like button and of course leave a comment Tell me what your result would be. Tell me what the product would be if I combine this reactant with water according to Makonikov's rule. Leave the answer in the comment section and, and I will tell you if you're correct. Also, if it's your first time, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, right? Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when you upload a new content. Don't forget to also share this content to your friends so that they can also learn. All right, so I'll be leaving the part B of this video, all right? The test solution part B 
I'll be dropping it in the next class. All right. So make sure you look out for the part B of this video. We are complete the solution to the test question. All right. Thank you and see you in the next class.